Hello, welcome to the Healthy Alternatives podcast. I am Dr. Christine Sauer with DocChristine.com. Today's show is a recording of my radio show of the same name. Enjoy! Good afternoon, this is Dr. Christine Sauer, your host of the show Healthy Alternatives here on 97.5 CIOE FM with live stream on communityradio.ca every Thursday at 12 noon Atlantic Standard Time. Thanks for tuning in today. In this show, I will talk mostly with guests about all aspects of health, healthcare and wellness from conventional to alternative and everything in between. My mission for this radio show is to help change people's lives for the better by informing them about different options to get and stay healthy and well so they can choose for themselves which option might work in their case. And if you feel you are stuck in a dark place, I want to tell you there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I've been asked very often to give some information about nutritional supplements, which one are good to take and what benefits and dangers uh, they have. So I decided to do a series of structured shows going deeper into health topics. Today, my fellow health coach, Jennifer Gauguin, and myself will be talking about vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is one of the most widely known and loved supplements. And many people have no idea what it's good for. So Jennifer, what do you use vitamin C for? Or where is it in it? And I know you're a specialist for food and you have great recipe ideas. What would you eat if you want some vitamin C? Some vitamin C? Well, I think when people think vitamin C, they automatically think about oranges. Um, so they think, oh, I need more vitamin C, so I better uh, drink more orange juice or eat an orange. Um what is typically some foods that are actually higher in vitamin C than oranges? Uh, broccoli, for one, if you like the, uh, the green leafy vegetables, broccoli, kale, uh, peppers, actually, raw peppers, yellow are really high in, uh, in vitamin C. And also red peppers are good and green, whatever peppers mm. are really good for you. For sure, for sure. Berries, of course. Strawberries um, in particular are, uh, are high in, um, in vitamin C as well as kiwis. Now, I know in Germany we love to eat currants, red currants, okay. white currants, black currants. Right. Are they good for you? They They're are. high in vitamin C? They are. Black currants actually have, uh, have quite a bit. They're, they're pretty close to the top of the list. Now, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, what many people don't know is how we got to know that vitamin C is actually something very important for life. And uh, we got to know about it from the experiences of the ancient sailors right. when they did not have enough vitamin C. And at that point, they didn't know what they were missing. They just noticed on long sea voyages, and even the ancient Chinese thousands mm -hmm. of years ago noticed that when their sailors were away for a long time and had a very uh, limited diet in right. fresh fruits and vegetables, they got a disease. Mm -hmm. They then called scurvy. scurvy. Exactly. And scurvy is characterized by bleeding, bruising, mm -hmm. your gums start bruising, swelling, bleeding, and your teeth fall out, your hair fall out, your joints start swelling. And they, uh, sailors, uh, died a terrible death. And they caused many, many deaths before they found out what they could do to mm -hmm. prevent it. Long Thank before they had the name for it. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with that too much anymore. We, no. Uh, we now know that that it is. But I love to, when I read that even the ancient Chinese knew that sprouted soybeans prevent scurvy. That's right. Now, what do you think why the sprouted? Well, actually, it's funny you mentioned sprouted because, um, like, if you go to your local grocery store or um, a specialty uh, store, you see a lot of sprouted, sprouted peas, sprouted alfalfa seeds, lots of different uh types of of sprouts that um that are, are quite popular again now um the reason that they are um 
more nutritious is because the plant is uh, regrowing. So it, it has all the nutrients that it needs. So it's uh, it's better for you. So actually sprouts contain more nutrients than the seed itself. Okay. That's amazing. That's right. And I find it quite easy to sprout yourself on the windowsill. <laughs> In a few That's days, true. you have fresh, right. nutritious sprouts. That's right. It's easy yeah. to do. Yeah. You just need a couple of little pots and there you some go. seeds. And, and if you, you want a recipe how to do it, just That's right. contact us. Just I know Jennifer know. has a good one. I have a good one. Mm -hmm. We'll be happy to share them. We've got recipes for everything. <laughs> That's always good to know. <laughs> now, that later, they knew they had to take vegetables and fruits. Right. And it worked pretty good. And nowadays, scurvy is hardly ever anywhere to, right. to be seen. Mm -hmm. It happens still in war zones. I mean, there's extreme famine. Right. But what also many people have no idea is that actually subclinical forms of vitamin C deficiency are still there. Okay. Because... Uh, many people don't know that humans, we cannot produce vitamin C, but many animals can. Right. Like you you mentioned uh, earlier today, we were having a conversation about this, that dogs can actually um, produce their own vitamin C. And they do. And when they feel sick, they produce right. more. Yeah. So That's for amazing. us, when we feel sick, we have to eat more. Exactly. Because exactly. we can produce it. Exactly. So that's quite interesting. That's why dogs are good meat eaters and mm -hmm. they don't need fruits and vegetables to survive. Okay. They make their own vitamin C. Exactly. Most animals do, not all. Right. So that's that's quite interesting. That is. I never and knew in, that before. In humans, many humans nowadays eat a mostly processed diet. Exactly. Or a very one-sided. Mm -hmm. well, yes, exactly. Like my... Uh, Picky eating kids, exactly. for example, that uh, are pretty selective, and it's hard. Uh, you know, they don't. Kids don't always eat a balanced diet like like we do, and they just prefer to eat what they like and not what they need. So, um, yeah. And sometimes what they don't like is food and vegetables. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And. There's adults that don't like food and vegetables. There are, for sure. And there's other adults and seniors that would like more mm -hmm. fresh food and vegetables but just can't afford it. Right. They're at a, in a higher risk yes. bracket. And it, it's kind of sad because they can uh, they can eat it, they would eat it, but it's, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. it, especially in the winter. So what do you do local. when you want... Vitamin C, relatively fresh food, and can't afford the fresh stuff that's imported. Well, a good option can be um, frozen vegetables because they're frozen at their peak. Mm -hmm. So all of the nutrients are there. And typically, frozen vegetables aren't quite as expensive. At the, uh, the grocery store, you can often find them on sale. You could stock up, buy a couple of bags at a time. Keep them in your freezer. Um, yeah, that's that's really a good option. Uh, is it better to eat uh, frozen vegetables or canned vegetables? Definitely frozen. The yeah. canned um, would have preservatives um, in them. Plus, they're sitting in a can, really, in, 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 in juices, impacted juices. Um, whereas the frozen... They pick them at, or they're harvested at their peak times, mm. and then just frozen right away. So all the nutrients are still are still, still there. there. Exactly. Whereas when you can something, you have to heat treat it That's for right. a long time to really kill all bacteria, mm -hmm. viruses, sporoses, so you don't get uh, one of the dangerous uh, foodborne illnesses That's that right. they had in earlier times, botulism, for example. Yep, yep. I remember my mother telling me, if you have something canned and the lid is bulged, don't That's eat right. it. That's right. That's right. So nowadays it hardly ever happens because they not only heat treat it, but sometimes they irradiate it on mm -hmm. top of it. Exactly. So I agree with you there. Frozen food is definitely a, a much yeah. better option. Yeah. And 
Oftentimes, it comes on sale at the end of the season. That's right. And it is quite affordable. It is. It is. I, I see, looking through the the flyers, I see lots of, of sales on those. Mm. And they don't take up a lot of room in your freezer. Now, do you know if organic vegetables have more vitamin C than regular? I have no idea, really. I, I'm not sure. Um, I wouldn't think necessarily. I, I think the main difference from organic to non-organic fruit and vegetable may be that they have less pesticides. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, and the flavor is probably richer in, um, organic food, but with regards to vitamin content, should be pretty comparable, I would think. They actually did studies, I think, that the vitamins is about the same. Mm -hmm. I know the mineral content may be different. Okay. Well, depending, depending on, on the, the soil. soil. Exactly. Exactly, the soil. Right. So important, the soil. Well, there was a, um, a study that was done. Um, they tracked the um, vitamin C in foods from 1985 to 2002. Hmm. And they found that, I mean, this it doesn't have anything to do with organic versus non-organic, but just the way that vegetables are, um, are grown nowadays, that the uh, vitamin C actually decreased quite a bit. Um, they looked at specifically with spinach and apples. And it actually decreased by about 65 to 70%. Wow, that's terrible. And that's just conditions. Yeah. Really. And How is it with the other nutrients? I'm pretty sure magnesium went down and the and folate and, and, and more uh, but, uh, yep. nutrients. So that, that that is not good. No, exactly. There's. Uh, it's yeah, very concerning it's... that our nutrition nowadays, it, it's all fast, fast, fast. Exactly. Grow fast, grow fast. And it's sprayed looks. with the pesticides and, um, yeah, the soil conditions just aren't as nutrient-rich, mm -hmm. mineral-rich as they used to be. And I remember when I had Michelle Palmer on and we talked about glyphosate and how it ruins the right, soil. Right, exactly. And when the soil can't live, the food is no longer nutritious. Mm -hmm. The same that the bees die and we need bees. Exactly. That's a, um, a big concern yeah. these days. I was actually at Costco yesterday and you can buy um, like the wooden, little wooden, um, not really a hive, but I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it's to attract the bees to your yard so oh, they nice. can pollinate. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's wonderful because we need more bees. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's a good point to bring us to the first half of today's broadcast here on 97.5 CIOE FM Community Radio. Please tune in after the commercial break for more about vitamin C. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to Healthy Alternatives here on 97.5 CIOE FM or on the web at communityradio.ca. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Sauer, and today my fellow health coach, Jennifer Gauguin, and I are talking about vitamin C. <laughs> there you are, back. Nice. So, Christine, why don't you explain um, to people about what we need vitamin C for, what it does in our bodies? I mean, I think people you know, typically think about vitamin C when you're sick. Mm -hmm. So if you have a cold or if you run down, you think, oh, I need more vitamin C. But, um, you know, what does that really mean? And, and other than that, what else do we need it for? Really, vitamin C is one of the foundational vitamins we need. And yes, it does help the immune system. Mm -hmm. It not only increases the function of the white blood cells that we need for the immune system, it actually helps them to regulate their function and not to be oxidized itself because okay. it is a potent antioxidant. It quenches free radicals and free radicals are little molecules that mm -hmm. the body produces every day by itself okay. in the normal metabolism. 
And when we are exposed to toxins as we are in our world and stress, we often get an overload of free radicals, okay, yeah. which causes inflammation and chronic disease. Mm -hmm. That's another show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and vitamin C helps quench those ra radicals okay. and make them basically harmless. But in addition to that, vitamin C is essential for the formation of collagen. Okay. Now, you might have heard of collagen. It's exactly in the skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people say for skincare you should use collagen. It's nonsense yeah. for skincare okay. because it doesn't get resorbed. Collagen does not get resorbed in the skin. You have to, it's a protein. Okay. And you need vitamin C to make it. But it's not just in the skin. Uh, collagen is an essential structural element in the blood vessels. And right. blood vessels are everywhere, everywhere. in the body except exactly. on the cornea. Okay. And blood vessels uh, need vitamin C to function. That's right. Actually, vitamin C in higher doses widens arteries, lowers your blood pressure, and helps the heart okay. not to get angina. Okay. So it is in blood vessels, tendons, mm -hmm. ligaments, bone, and skin, of course, and joints too. And that's why the sail sailor had swollen joints. Right. And because the joints didn't have enough collagen, and of course the blood vessels leaked, that's why they bled. Right. And bruised. Makes sense. So... Um, I'm thinking about my own personal situation. Mm -hmm. My um, naturopath recommended that my younger son that ha has um, the eczema um, take collagen. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm, I'm just kind of thinking how would collagen help that? Or I think it was more for like his gut actually. Mm -hmm. I think collagen can help the gut, yeah. and, uh, but collagen is a protein. So as long as the protein digestion works, okay. you have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach and you have enough enzymes, mm -hmm. then it will be broken down into amino acids. Right. And many of those are essential. And the body in the end doesn't care where it gets the amino acids from right. as long as it gets the essential amino acids and the essential vitamin and nutrients. Okay. And it's certainly good to take uh, protein, especially for growing right. children. Exactly. They have to have enough of the essential amino acids in food. But the best way to get it is mm -hmm. whole foods, Whole Definitely. vegetables, grass-fed meat, pastured meat, if you can afford it, mm -hmm. or some lean meats and poultry is definitely good. And if you can have it, organic dairy. Yeah. I don't propagate regular dairy because it's so high in hormones That's nowadays. Right. I know. It's... Yeah, it's a sad, uh, <laughs> but then again, that's another show. <laughs> that's another show about the the, 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 the belly and the, the yeah. stomach. And oh, you yeah. should definitely do that because it's so important. Oh, it affects so many people. Yes. You don't even realize. No, many, many people have what's called a leaky gut. Mm -hmm. And vitamin C actually helps to seal a leaky gut. Okay. But on the other hand, if you take more than what you need, mm -hmm. you can get the diarrhea and stomach upset from it. So that... Could be a good a good indication. How much for, you need? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And generally, for adults, they say two grams is safe a day. Okay. Which is way more than what the recommended daily intake is, which at the moment is right. ninety milligrams, which is just enough to prevent scurvy in the population. Okay. But it does not prevent the subclinical vitamin C deficiency. Right, it's which not. We have we a chronic more. fatigue epidemic. Mm -hmm. Part of it is that we don't get the nutrients with the diet that we should get. That's right. So, at, like, for an example, mm -hmm. um, quantity-wise of what you should eat on some of those um, mm -hmm. higher... Vitamin C food items, like um, let's say, so an orange, for example. Um, if you have one like pretty large size orange, um, lemons would have to be two. I don't okay. know if a lot of people are eating two lemons a day, but um, I mean, even if you were to squeeze a lemon into your water, mm. would still... Yes, most of it. You don't get the good uh, uh, pectins right, and, and okay. the good phytochemicals that are in the pulp. 
Right. Because there's important uh, nutrients in the pulp mm -hmm. of citrus fruits okay. that you should eat. Makes sense. So the more pulp we can eat, if you can, take the whole lemon, peel it, and throw it in the blender and use right. the whole insides. It's a good thing to do if you're yeah. Uh, juicing. Yeah, much better. Exactly. Uh, let me see. Apples would have to be a pound and a half, so that's quite... It's a minimum quite, vitamin C. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. It's a lot more than probably what most people realize. Yeah. Um, smaller quantities, currants, is uh, you only need two ounces. Two ounces of currants. And... Hey, we should put some currant bushes in the currants <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and, and snack on them. Not a bad idea. And peppers. Probably, like, one of the, um... um best things you can eat like in the smaller quantities mm -hmm. uh an ounce an or ounce like of red peppers red pepper yellow, peppers. yello orange mm -hmm. so that gives you the minimum required it dosage does. of vitamin c so it that's does. good to know yeah so a pound and a half of apple on ounce of red pepper exactly well that's I know. just one strip of or two strips of pepper no yeah. who, who can't that's eat nothing. that yeah just who can't eat that get your favorite dip out yeah. and but it might not be enough to for most people, especially if we are sick, because right. people don't know that we need more when we are sick. And another thing that vitamin C does, and most people don't know, is it helps in the synthesis of a certain neurotransmitter. That's a brain chemical, mm -hmm. and it can influence brain function and mood also. Okay. And we need it to the production of carnitine. Carnitine is a molecule that our mitochondria need. The mitochondria are the little powerhouses mm -hmm. in our, in our they generate the energy for us. So vitamin C is needed to produce our energy. energy. So if we That's don't right. have enough vitamin C, we get tired. So basically, vitamin C is, is a huge vitamin for it, us. It is a very huge, important vitamin. And it also plays a role in high cholesterol because it uh, plays a role in the transformation of cholesterol to bile salts. Okay. But I, I want to warn everybody, it's not medical advice that we're giving. If That's you have right. any disease, any medication, please ask your physician or the healthcare provider or pharmacist if you can take it because too much vitamin C gets metabolized to oxalates. Okay. And if you tend to have kidney stones, eat too much and don't drink enough, you might get kidney stones. That's right. So you don't you want to avoid that. It's important to talk to somebody before you change your supplement regimen. Definitely. So speaking of supplement, do you um, recommend that people take a vitamin C supplement? Often it's advisable, okay. especially in times of the winter and many people do and uh, if you want to take more than two milligrams there's a enzyme test that you should, might take before you take more to avoid side effects okay and i know naturopaths do it and in uh, naturopathic medicine sometimes up to 100 grams of vitamin c is given iv that's a hundred thousand milligrams wow that's a large yeah. amount and that is often given in cancer treatment okay. And it actually makes a difference. Yeah, but it would, mm. for sure. And vitamin C, of course, is an antioxidant and it prevents the formation of cancer-causing stomach chemicals that okay. you get from grilled meat. So That's right. That's right. So um, a good way to, to combat that, uh, especially with the spring and summer coming up. Barbecue uh, season, uh, exactly, hopeful. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Steaks and, mm. you know, chicken burgers, whatever you put on your barbecue. Um, have a salad with it. Mm. A, a nice green salad and not, not like a pasta salad or something, but um, a green salad. Um, because Some peppers. That, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, peppers, strawberries, yeah, anything. Um, we've a got fruit lots and of recipes. with your grilled meat, yeah. That's right. That's right, because it helps to uh, to counteract all the uh, um, carcinogens that are that come up from the the flame. Yeah, that's that's meat. really a good tip, and everybody yeah. should do that. When you have steak, and you know, when you barbecue it, it doesn't always stay uh, just nice and light brown. It gets too dark. Oh, for sure. And to prevent us from getting the cancer, eat something high in vitamin C, exactly. fruit, 
salad on mixed fruit and, mm -hmm. and lettuce. Even better. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Just send us an email if uh, if you're looking for any recipe suggestions. We've got uh, got tons of good ones that we've tried out. Super. And that's a good way to get to the end of today's show. Please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions, thoughts, comments, or suggestions. Mm -hmm. Or if you would like to have a recipe for any of the great salads that Jennifer is making, and myself too, and we love to eat. Can we love use to a, eat well. The lemon juice to, to eat for uh, dressing. Mm, and to <laughs> marinate steak. That's, That's right. good too. Yeah. So my email here is Christine, C H R I S T I N E, at communityradio.ca. Or you can contact us through our website, docchristine.com. And we are always grateful for feedback. And I also want to extend a special thank you to today's producer, Jim Francis. Thanks, Jim. You're the best. You might not know this, but this is a volunteer-run, non-profit radio station. And we even have an art gallery. If you're local and you'd like to drop in, we are at 11 Glendale Avenue, Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. Thank you all for listening to Healthy Alternatives. I'm your host, Dr. Christine Sauer. Tune in next Thursday at noon on 97.5 CIOE FM Community Radio with live stream on communityradio.ca for the next episode. Goodbye and have a great day.